Good. All right. So sorry. My bad. Uh, good evening, everybody. Pastor Joyce, we're welcoming you to our Wednesday night worship service tonight. Um, we want you to check in with one another, and we're checking in with you, but most importantly, all of us are checking in with God. We always need that uh, midweek pick us up. So I uh, hope everything's well in your world. We continue to pray for you and everyone throughout our world these days. Um, so much happening. A couple of quick announcements. Um, the first and third Sundays of the month, we'll be conducting communion here at the church at 7 o'clock, uh, followed, uh, following the 7 p.m. Uh, prayer time for you. So if you'd like to come up to the church, uh, we'll have a drive through uh, type of stopping and praying with you, talking with you, of course, and uh, you can receive communion and a time to be together with one another. Uh, safely, of course. So uh, that's something we've just started implementing. So if you'd like to come up to the church for the 7 o'clock uh, sing, singing time with uh, Lulu, the ukulele, <laughs> with Pastor Jamie and Pastor Dosh, and then um, you can get into the Spirit of God as well uh, by receiving communion uh, through us. So uh, something new, first and third Sundays of the month. Uh, the fourth Saturday of the month, we will have our food pantry, as always. That's at 9 o'clock uh, here at the church. It's also a drive through um, uh, safely we give out food so we know there's more and more need if you or someone you know needs food um, you can also sometimes through the week if you need something uh, we also have a, a church pantry here as well uh, for those of you that local uh, within the church as well as someone you may know but the fourth Saturday is our big drive through where, where the community comes out and receives food very important ministry that we're a part of uh, one other thing is El Tamarindo in, La, in uh, the Dominican Republic uh, they were affected by the recent hurricane. Um, they had some flooding and some, a lot of medical problems there. Uh, the school is still operating from distance learning, so that's, that's a blessing. And uh, they're using tablets, and some of the kids are meeting in uh, homes where they have, of course, masks. And um, the teachers are actually uh, trying to do, conduct as many uh, safe distancing um, parts of education for those children there in El Tamarindo, a very impoverished uh, part of the Dominican Republic. Um, and also, they also have a food pro program that they're helping to feed the people in the community and a lot of those children as well. So our church has been a part of that mission um, for all the years that we've been here. Uh, El Tamarindo particularly, uh, even more so now, is in, in more dire need. So uh, this month is our time to gather offerings for El Tamarindo. So if you would like to donate, you can again use our website, the donate page. It'll be under missions. We'll know that it's going to go towards El Tamarindo. Uh, we want to continue to pay for the teachers' um, salaries. Uh, they get like $75 a year, so it's not a lot of money. But it, to them, it's everything. It's their um, me only means of support. Um, and also, uh, in that salary, they get health insurance. They have no other means of health insurance if it weren't for uh, this ministry that we have. So, uh, you know, if God puts it on your heart, if you'd like to send it to the church this month, we'll be sending them some money at the end of August. So we want to start promoting that now so that we are able to um, be able to send as much money as possible to help that ministry and those folks that are in such important need. So uh, God will bless you and we're doing what we can wherever we can. And the Dominican Republic is a, a place that God has placed on our hearts. And for the last 27 years, this church has supported uh, the orphanage in La Urena, as well as the school and uh, church that's in El Tamarindo. So we ask for blessings and prayers upon them as well. They're going through very difficult times because of COVID, more so than what we could face here. So... Uh, just kind of want to put that out there. So I know we're generous and you're generous, so please consider uh, giving to that mission. Without uh, further ado, I suppose it's time to come into a time of worship with God, to be revived, refreshed, to have God's spirit move in us and through us uh, for the love of God to rain down upon you all and us all as God continues to do. We're going to sing praise and worship, hear the word of God, and hopefully that'll be something that will encourage you, uplift you, and give you hope and give you more strength as you're going through your own uh, personal trials in these days that we're apart. So God is there with you. We're with you in spirit and in this ministry. It's so important that we reach out and have this worship service on Wednesday nights. So thank you for joining us. Let us pray. Loving God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, God. We know that you are a God who sustains us, who provides for us, but especially who loves us and cares 
all about us, God. We know that the things that we cannot control, the things that are so difficult for us to handle, God, the problems, the impossibilities that all of us are facing throughout the world are in your hands, God, and you, God, can change and transform anything, and we thank you for that, God. As we come into this time of worship, let us set aside our fears, our worries, our concerns. We come into your presence where we can be at peace. We can feel your presence upon us. We can feel your loving arms around us, and you can strengthen us, support us, and help us, God, continue to be resilient people who continue to do what we can to minister to others, God, and to especially to spread your love wherever we may be. We ask the anointing of your spirit upon this service this night. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. I'm so glad that you could join us this midweek for this midweek service. We're going to sing one of Tasha's favorite songs. I pulled it out just for her. And every time we sing this song, I think about the parable that Jesus told. Par- Jesus told this story about two dudes. One built his house upon sand. He called him the foolish man. Very foolish. Built his house on sand. And when the storm came, his house didn't last very long. It got swept away. But there was another dude who built his house on the rock. And when the storm came, boy, it didn't matter. His house stood firm. Now, there's a children's song about that, but we're not going to sing that tonight. We're going to sing this adult version. But the fact of the matter is, is if you have your life built properly on the rock, and that rock is Jesus, doesn't matter what's happening out in this world. The storms may come. The sun may come, it doesn't matter, but you're going to stand firm on that rock. So tonight, if you haven't chosen to build your house on a rock, that would be my strong suggestion for this evening. That would be the wise dude. That would be the wise dude. I'm sorry, he was the wise dude. The sand guy was the foolish dude. Be a wise dude tonight. Can't let it play on that guitar a couple times. I can see the clouds rolling. I can feel the winds, they try to shake me. But I will not be moved, cause my feet are on the rock. I can feel the waters rise. I can hear the howling lies that haunt me. Fear won't hold me now, my feet are on the rock. When I feel my hope about to break, I will cling to your unchanging grace. Let the waters come and the earth give way. I'll be dancing in the rain. My feet are on the rock. I can see the morning light. I can feel the joy on the horizon. Here my faith is found, I stand on solid ground. When I feel my hope about to break, I will cling to your unchanging grace. Let the waters come and the earth give way, I'll be dancing in the rain. Yeah, 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 my feet are on the rock. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands, our feet are on the rock. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands, our feet are on the rock. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands, our feet are on the rock. When I feel my hope about to break. I will cling to your unchanging grace. Let the waters come and the earth give way. I'll be dancing in the rain. When I feel my hope about to break, I will cling to your unchanging grace. Let the waters come and the earth give way. I'll be dancing in the rain. My feet are on the rock. Ooh, my feet are on the rock. Ooh, my feet are on the rock. There they are. Exactly. Be a wise dude. Light of the world, you step down into 
darkness. Open my eyes, let me see the beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I.
every time we worship God with our hearts and spirit, that's true praise. That's true worship. So wherever we are, we can praise God. We can thank God. We can worship God by being grateful, by being praise-filled and constantly focusing in on all that God is and God's awesomeness. And our love for God is reciprocated by God's love for us, although maybe God's love is a little greater sometimes than what we can sometimes show God our love is. So, um, But we show God's love every time we do what God would ask us to do and we have faith and trust in God as well as loving others. That's, what, that's really what shows that we are truly Christ's children. So tonight we're going to go to the book of Second Chronicles, um, chapter 20, and um, it's, a, it's an awesome story. It's, uh, a, it's about a time when there were problems uh, for uh, King Jehoshaphat and his people, and there was all kinds of turbulence, and, and his enemies were about to really just attack and destroy the people in Judah. So that's what this story is all about. So sometimes it's not as literal as that, that we have enemies ready to attack us, although it seems like most of us throughout our lives have problems that seem to attack us or, or things that come our way, circumstances that are problematic to say the least, and they mount up. And then we get to the point of where we just don't know what to do. So that's kind of what, what the theme of this story is going to be about and we're going to see what Jehoshaphat does with that. So uh, verse, verse in uh, Second Chronicles 20. After this, the armies of the Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Meunites declared war on Jehoshaphat. So the me people, you get that? You see how that goes in there? Mm -hmm. Those me people. Declared war on Jehoshaphat. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army from Edom is is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. They're already at Hazanon Tamar. This was another name for En Gedi. Jehoshaphat was alarmed by this news and sought the Lord for guidance. So as soon as alarming news came, we see that what he does is he goes to God for guidance. So when problems come our way, we go to God for guidance. Good directions here. He also gave orders that everyone throughout Judah should observe a fast. So what that means is they're going to pray and they're going to stop eating and they're going to focus only in on God. So they're not going to be busy doing all kinds of things. They're going to be just be stopping, praying, and fasting and just bringing the, this big problem to God. So fasting on the news, the weather, uh, fasting on anything in their life that they're busy about. They're going to just stop everything, whether they were farmers, whether they were uh, sheep, uh, shepherds, rather. Uh, they would uh, stop what they were doing fast and, and go to God in prayer. So two things we do when problems come our way, go to God for guidance, and we gather everybody, the whole entire land of Judah, stopped to pray. Okay, so people from the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord. So not only did they stop where they were, they all came together. They went to Jerusalem the, where the Holy Temple was that Solomon had built there because uh, Jehoshaphat was actually a descendant of uh, Solomon and David. So he knew that this, obviously the temple had been built in Jerusalem. And so the people of Judah go to Jerusalem to seek God. They go to the temple. They go to the place where they can worship. Jehoshaphat stood before the people of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord. He prayed, O Lord God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. So this is what Jehoshaphat's doing. He's affirming who God is, powerful and mighty. God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? Your people settled here and built this temple for you. They said, 
Whenever we are faced with calamity such as war, disease, or famine, we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. We can cry out to you to save us, and you will hear us and rescue us. This, by the way, comes from the prayer that Solomon had made when he dedicated that temple in 1 Kings chapter 8. So that long prayer of Solomon, when, the, when that temple was dedicated and put in place for a place where people could come and just pray towards the temple even. They don't have to physically be there. They could pray toward the temple. This is one of the scriptures that Solomon, or prayer that Solomon had read uh, to the people when they gathered to dedicate that temple. So here Jehoshaphat is repeating the same prayer and, and acknowledging that when we're faced with war, disease, or famine, we come and stand in your presence. And we, those of us that much long after that, who are Christians, anytime we stand in prayer and close our eyes, we pray towards God, who we know is in heaven, and Jesus Christ, who is a mediator that prays to God on our behalf. We can stand in God's presence anywhere, no matter what's coming at us, and be in God's presence and pray. And so we cry out to you to save us, and you will hear us. This is how confident he was. He knew that God would hear, and God would rescue them. So even though the Moabites, Ammonites, and the Meunites were coming after them, he went to God. And so obviously he affirmed the same prayer that his ancestor uh, had taught him, and he continues to believe that same thing about God. And so we continue to believe the same thing about God as well as we read it in Scripture here tonight. Now see what the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir are doing. You would not let our ancestors invade those nations when Israel left Egypt, so they went around them and did not destroy them. Now see how they reward us. for They've come to throw us out of your land, which you gave us as an inheritance. O oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we're looking to you for help. So here we have a major problem. He realizes, as the people do, that they don't know what to do. They don't know how to get out of this situation. There are many, many, there's just three large armies that are coming against uh, the people of Judah. So he, all he knows to do, Jehoshaphat, as the leader here, is to go before God and say, we're powerless, we admit that, we know that, and we don't know what to do, but we're asking you for help. And so he has a faith and a trust that God will help him. As all the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives and children, the spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name was Jehaziel, who was son of Zechariah, son of Jael and son of Manatiah, a Levite who was a descendant of Asaph. Now, Asaph was one of the people that wrote the Psalms. He's, he's somebody that was a Levite priest and wrote Psalms very often. So uh, the Psalms are made up from Psalms of David, also Asaph. So you can see the descendant here as well, how important it is that we have people that precede us and follow after us uh, to continue uh, God's leadership, God's prayer, and the faith that they have in God as well. And this man begins to prophesy, so because the Holy Spirit comes upon him. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Both factions are there now. Both people are there. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Sounds familiar as to what God had said to Joshua before he went into the promised land, right? Don't be afraid, don't be discouraged, Joshua 1, 9. As well as how many other times does God say throughout, and Jesus Christ himself often said, don't be afraid, don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid, don't be discouraged by this mighty army. You know, this huge army might, might be big, it might be scary, it, it's, it's impending doom in some people's minds. It's more than they can handle to defend themselves against. They can't possibly, in their natural way, uh, physically, it's impossible for them to defeat this army. They know that. So this prophecy is coming forth to say, don't be discouraged by this mighty army. Don't pay attention to the army. 
For the battle is not yours, but God's. So the mighty army of things that often come in our life, no matter what it is, what we call it, what name it has, uh, it could be a sense of a bunch of people that are meanites and mean to us all and so on and so forth and only have their own way in mind and people that come against us and situations that come against us and problems and war, famine and disease, I think is what was going on here as well um, as in the Israelites' life. All of us have these kind of things that come against us at various times, but we do not need to be afraid or be discouraged because the battle isn't ours. It's God's. God is going to solve the problem. God solves every problem for everything in life we could ever face. Everything. Verse 16, tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jeruel. But you will not even need to fight. This is my kind of fighting. This is my kind of way I want to take on an enemy. I'm kind of a lazy. <laughs> uh, I would like to take the least path of resistance, put it that way. I'm not one that likes conflict. I would rather have God fight my battles than me fight my battles. And no matter what comes our way in our life, no matter what it is, let God fight your battle for you. Things that are impossible, things that need change, things that need decisions to be made, when, no matter who it is, no matter what it is, no matter how powerful we might think that other people or, or events or situations are, or how powerless we may feel, God is still greater and God is more powerful than that. And let God fight the battle. You just sit back and watch what God does. It's an awesome way to uh, watch your life get transformed, even if it's a battle within yourself, something you're trying to change, something you've worked on and you can't seem to change, something that, I mean, for me, I guess it's kind of the battle of the bulge sometimes when I'm uh, eating a little too much quarantine food these days, right? We have those kind of things, too, going on in all of our lives, you know, battling, you know, with the refrigerator door trying to, you know, pull us into it, right? I mean, it can be small or big like that. Whatever, I think, unfortunately, the battles many of us are facing are life-threatening and or soul-threatening. And so we have to let God fight the big battles that we are too puny to fight. It's okay to know that we're weak as a human and we have limitations. We're powerful. We're limitless with God because God is limitless. However, we have to know what battle's mine and what battle belongs to God's. You know, that's the learning that discernment throughout all of our lives, even when it's about enemies that are trying to harm us. Let God fight that battle for you. You'll be surprised how God's justice, well, you won't be surprised, but God, you'll see how God's justice prevails every single time. I've seen it so often, and we see it in Scripture, but we see it in people's lives all the time. God can turn things just on a dime, just like that. So you will not even need to fight. Take your positions, then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. Sounds familiar like when God said for the people to stand still as they were crossing the Red Sea, remember? Stand still, stand where you are, watch God part the Red Sea, God did. All of us throughout our lives, sometimes we want to run into battle, we want to run ahead of God, we want to take on problems that are too big for us to take, we want to tackle things that really we have no business doing, or we want to just fight and think we're strong enough to wrestle people or things to the ground when God is the only one that has that kind of power. And sometimes God's way of helping us is so much easier and smoother and sweeter and uh, a lot less problematic in terms of us getting ourselves upset and things of this nature. So when we have faith and trust in God and when we're not afraid because we can trust God, we know who God is, that faith and trust, because first of all, it was prophesied that they were going to win the battle. The battle belongs to God. So when we listen to those kind of prophecies, we know that God wins every battle. He hasn't lost one yet. So uh, even death could not defeat him, Jesus Christ. Nothing will defeat God ever, which means nothing will defeat us ever either. Going on to the next verses, it says, 
Stand still. Watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, people of Judah and Jerusalem and Cornerstone and America and Dominican Republic and the entire world. I'm not going to name all the nations of the world. However, God is with us all. God is with us and God is for us. God is. Do not be afraid or discouraged. He says it again. Go out there tomorrow for the Lord is with you. Just think, if you could tackle whatever problem you had, I don't care what it is, if you're trying to solve whatever situation in your life, it could even, I don't know what it could be for you, but whatever it is, how about you take God with you into the battle of it, if that's such a thing, if you're seeing it as a battle, something that needs to be overcome, particularly if it's a habit within you or something that you're struggling with. Stand still. Take your position in, in the presence of God and watch what God does. And, and just have the courage enough to continue to move forward, whatever God directs you to do. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out there tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Then, the, then King Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. Before you go into battle, worship the Lord. So important. Pray to God, but worship him. Just thank him for what he's all going to do in the future. Then the Levites from the clans of Korhath and Korah stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. So they get up. These folks, these, these priests, these Levites, the, these families jumped up and started shouting praises to God. There's power in praise. There's power in thanks. There's power in gratitude, right? For all the things God has done, all the things God is doing, and all the things God will do. And, that, and you, we praise God all the time that lifts our spirit and empowers us. Just by lifting our hands sometimes, and just the physiology of that, of praising God, closing our eyes. Yes, high five Jesus. And you can feel empowered in the middle of what you're going to go into to take on as a battle. Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, listen to me, all of you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. Now, notice what's happening. They had prayed. They had fasted. They, God came. into the. They went to repeat what the prayer was of how God would sustain and would save and rescue. They affirmed all that. Someone spoke for God on God's behalf to encourage the people to say the battle's not yours. It belongs to God. God's the word comes, don't be afraid, don't be discouraged. And the very next thing that happens after they praise God, this is part of the steps of what's all going to transpire. They're going into a, a war, keep in mind. They're going to go fight a battle, so they think. They're taking on these big armies, right? So they think, well, no, they're going to just stand still and watch what God does. Kind of impractical in a way if you thought about armies doing such a thing. But we're, we're soldiers for Christ, so we can do this kind of spiritual warfare here. So on the way to Jehoshaphat, stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you'll be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. After consulting the leaders of the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him, in his holy splendor. You're going to go into a battle, so what do you do? You, you appoint singers, and you say, you're going to go ahead of us. We're going into war. We're going into battle here. We're going to have you go ahead of us, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. And this is what they sang. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Gee, that sounds like a familiar song we might have heard around this church a few hundred times, right? <laughs> this comes out of the Psalms. It comes out of First Chronicles. This is a song of praise that David had sung. Give thanks to the Lord. He is good. His love endures forever. That's what they sang going out into battle. At that moment, they began to sing and give praise. Now, here's two sides of this, right? So you got people singing, 
Give thanks to the Lord as love endures forever. At that moment, they're singing. They're giving praise in that song. The people are praising. The Lord caused, caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Montseer to start fighting among themselves. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had finished off the army of Seir, they turned on each other. Praising God, while the people are praising and singing God, these people come against each other. It's like, because obviously these are the type of people, especially Meunites, who only care about themselves, are going to fight other people to kind of take care of themselves, right? So they begin to battle themselves. You see, the, you see a, a house divided will not stand, so you can't fight one another inside either. Division never works ever. You know, Satan tries to divide, Jesus multiplies, so that's what God does. And as we multiply our praises and our singing all the time to God and we affirm, give thanks to the Lord. He is good. His love endures forever. We give thanks to God in the midst of a storm, in the midst of a problem, in the midst of taking on any kind of enemy of any kind that we might have. And even if it's the refrigerator or the chocolate piece of pie that's sitting over there, whatever it might be, when we instead put our mind and our hearts on God and who God is, and this is the holy temple of God, and I, I need to respect it and take care of it, right? And put my mind on praising God or looking at the problems that seem to be such a multitude, right? We instead change our thoughts by singing praises to God and giving praises to God. Give thanks to the Lord all the time. And if you do that, and you affirm his faithful love endures forever. He is never going to leave us nor forsake us, and he's going to take care of us. So they turn on each other. So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, there were dead bodies lying on the ground for as far as they could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to gather the plunder. They found vast amounts of equipment, clothing, and other valuables, more than they could carry. Not only is their enemy defeated, guess what? They get blessed in the process besides. There was so much plunder that it took them three days. Three days. Yeah, I wonder why that number came up. Three days just to collect it all. On the fourth day, they gathered in the Valley of Blessing, which got its name that day because the people praised and thank God there. So their enemies are defeated. They killed each other off because that's what hatred does. And these people never had to raise a finger to do any harm to anybody. God took care of their enemies, wiped them out, took down that problem away from them, changed those circumstances that seemed impossible uh, to overcome. But it was through the people giving thanks to God in song and in praise on the way on the way expecting God to bless them. And then when they get to that place, they gather all those blessings. And some of the blessings we've received at the end of a problem being solved, just it, the sense of relief is a blessing unto itself. And what they do there is they thanked God there. They didn't just grab all their stuff and go, oh, wow, look what I have. They stopped and thanked God obviously won for the victory that they, none of them really thought they could ever, ever overcome this vast army. Sometimes we look at our lives and we think, how are we going to ever overcome all these problems that we're facing throughout this world right now? I know how. By God, by going to God in prayer, going to God fasting, proclaiming and affirming who God is, and letting God solve the problem for us because it's beyond our capabilities. God will be the one to solve everything that we need. So it's still there, this very place. It's called the Valley of Blessing even today. It's still there. Then they returned to Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat leading them, full of joy that the Lord had given them victory over their enemies. They marched into Jerusalem to the music, again, of harps, lyres, trumpets, might have been a ukulele or two, I don't know. A guitar, who's to say? A couple of cymbals. <laughs> you know, just going into Jerusalem, praising God again. Going back to that temple, right? So they're going to go back to the place where they prayed and come back and praise and give God thanks and singing music along the way. So they, they proceeded to the temple of the Lord when the surrounding kingdoms, kingdoms heard 
that the Lord himself had fought against the enemies of Israel, the fear of God came over them. <laughs> I would think so. <laughs> so Jehoshaphat's kingdom was at peace, for his God had given him rest on every side. And Jehoshaphat was 35 years old, and he reigned 25 more years after that. So great big victory, right? Big, big, big problem at the beginning of the chapter. Look what transpires as the steps along the way. You go back and read the story so you can, you know, mark those places where you can see when you are faced with a battle, when you're faced with a problem, the steps you can take, what we are taking as a church family, certainly. Um, and then we're going to stand firm in the presence of God, believing and trusting. Uh, but also, we're going to continue to sing praises. Have you noticed our services always begin with music? Why? It's because it ushers in the Spirit of God. We praise God before we do anything, before the Word comes forth, because we want to be in a spirit of thankfulness and gratefulness and praise to God. And all the time, one of the scriptures we always want to know and, and look at constantly, which is a true statement, it's not just a song that we sing here at church, but give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. If we could just say that phrase all the time. It's 2 Chronicles 20. It'll be verse, uh, let me see what my eyes say, 21. So that way you can remember that verse. But I think uh, maybe a song's coming, I guess. I think somebody should sing this song maybe. It wasn't planned or anything, but I thank you for that. So sing along with us. So whatever, let, let's, do, let's look at it this way. Whatever vast problem all of us are facing right now, we stopped, we are praying and fasting, we're putting our focus and attention on God, we're affirming who God is, we know that whether there's war, famine, disease, or anything, God will help us overcome that. And we all know that the battles all of us face are greater than us, but our God is greater than those battles. So remember, when the battle's not yours, let God be the one that steps in and helps you. And as you Put your problems down on paper sometimes or wherever, however you do that in your prayer time. Give God a to-do list. While you're doing that, say to God, thank you, God, for already answering this prayer that I'm writing down and all the other prayers you already answered. Because, Lord God, you are good. You are so good. I give you thanks and praise. And your love endures forever. That's something to hold on to. Amen. 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 Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. Sing praise, sing praise. With the mighty Love endures forever. For the life that has been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong. God is with us forever and ever. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us forever and ever forever. From the rising to the setting love endures forever. By the grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. Sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. God is with us forever and ever.
Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us. Forever and ever. Forever. His love endures 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 forever. God, we thank you very much for gathering us to today, God, and to teaching us a lesson of step back and let you step in, God. You've got us before we even think about that we have to do anything, so we might as well just let you do it in the first place, God. So thank you very much for that, God. Thank you for bringing us here today, God. Thank you for your love that does endure forever. In your precious name we pray, amen. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Have a good night, and we'll see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. Later, peeps. Bye, dudes. Be a wise dude. <laughs>